Hello everyone, it is Monday, January 4th, um, Dark Heart of Winter vlog. I'm finally back after a couple days of not feeling great. Let me show you a quick outfit of the day. This is a little brooch that I don't remember where I got, but I know it's not vintage. Um, this is a lady skater dress uh, that I made in December. Um, it's got pockets. These are the inseam pocket pattern from Tilly and the Buttons. It's a free pattern, and you can just put it in any of your dresses that need inseam pockets. So here's it a little farther back, twirly dress. I like the skirt on this a lot. It's a half circle skirt, um, and it's very comfortable to wear. So my stomach finally got better. I was able to wash my hair last night and it's actually waving up quite nicely. I didn't do anything really to it, but put gel in it this morning. So that's awfully nice. My lipstick is Sweet Tooth from NYX. It's the NYX Suede formula, which I am really into. I have a few of those. Um, and then my eyes today are Dose of Color Mauve mixed with the Juvia's Berry palette. I feel like if there was a palette that sold the two of those together, then it would be the best palette in history. So um, let me guys, let me show you guys the clue. Um, so I don't know if I ever mentioned, but this cowl is the Boo Knits Color Me cowl, a uh, knit along, it's a mystery knit along. And there's only two, and it's the 12 days of Christmas. So there's, it started on Christmas day and there's only 12 clues total, and I'm on, I have clue 11 I got today. I finished, I'm almost done with clue 10. Again, if you're knitting this too and you're not on clue 10 yet, don't look. Um, so here she is. So I have two more rows of black garter stitch. That's the wrong side. I have two more rows of black garter stitch to do on this uh, for this clue and then I looked ahead at clue 11 and it's just more garter stitch with some stripes um, but yeah this puppy <laughs> has gotten very big it's been a little hard to motivate myself to work on it because in my current knitting life I just like a little bit more excitement <laughs> um, than lots of garter stitch but I do I do love it uh, it's definitely like a product knit I am Enjoying knitting it with everybody in the knit along, which is on Ravelry, but I really just want to finish it so I can have the shawl. I feel like if you are a beginner knitter, you could actually do this pattern because the only parts that are like not standard, just stockinette or garter stitch, are these cool little alien circle things. They kind of remind me of like the little round things from the Doctor Who TARDIS, so that's kind of nice. I would almost want to do another one of these in TARDIS colors someday. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, uh, maybe next year. Um, but yeah, they're really easy anyway. They're just some increases and decreases and some slip stitches. So yeah, a beginner could totally do this. Um, but so far, so good. Matches my outfit today. So that's one thing I can wear it with. Bonus. Okay, so I thought I would talk to you guys about some sewing plans. I did a fabric haul yesterday um, and there's a couple more bits and bobs I want to get, but for the most part, I've got the fabric I need to do my plans. Look, Remy's here. He hasn't said hi yet. Hi. Who's a big, beautiful Remy cat? Remy cat says hello. He doesn't want to be on camera. Okay. Goodbye, giant one. He's so sweet. He is my pretty Siamese all. Yes. Okay. A little blown out today. Sorry about the lighting. So, recently... I downloaded from Kindle a book that I found very, very, very intriguing and very inspirational. And it is Everyday Fashions of the 1930s. So, it, what it is, is 1930s Sears catalog uh, pictures scanned and made into a book. So I'll try to show some of them. Isn't that amazing? Um, so I was really inspired by this. And specifically, let me show you this one. Why is it not letting me? Okay, 
Here we go. Can you guys see that skirt suit with the polka dots? So in the 1920s, there was a couple trends that I really liked that sort of carried on into the 30s. One of them was, while it is a little cringy and culturally appropriation uh, sort of now, um, they were very much into this concept of Orientalism, which was a sort of fascination with all things Far and Middle East. They also were obsessed with Egypt. Look, it's Luna. Hello. Luna. Um, and what that translated to was sometimes, like I said, some pretty cringy ideas. But it also meant that they used silk and colors inspired by that time and things like that. Um, so I do have a fabric coming that is a white um, ITY jersey that has like hieroglyphic print on it. It has like Anubis and like Horus and all these different sort of Egyptian kind of symbols and ideas. And I want to make a blouse out of that. And then the other idea that carried on from the 20s into the 30s with these sort of tabard inspired pieces. So things that almost had like a middle, e like a middle, medieval, medieval, that's the word I'm looking for, a medieval connotation to it. So like um, King Arthur-ish things. So tabards, like long skinny lines, weird Vs at the ends of garments, things like that. So that tabard style and that sort of Asian inspired Middle Eastern inspired Egyptian theme did go into the early 30s a little bit and I was really inspired by that. So this paneled skirt here, do you see how it's got that V in the front? So I'm gonna try to draft a skirt that has the V in the front and then has that type of light fullness around the rest of the skirt and um, sort of make that blouse to wear with it. So I get this kind of early 30s sort of outfit that incorporates the trends of the Egyptian obsession and the tabard style. And um, so looking through this, I got, I mean, there's just, there's, they show the underwear, they show the hats. I mean, this is a great book. I think it was like 10 bucks, um, but it has so many images. It has some menswear from the 1930s, which is beautiful. Um, so I kind of got this idea that I wanted to sort of create a spring collection. All of these house dresses, guys, and those coats. Oh, I wanted to create kind of a spring collection that was sort of uh, my 1930s Gothic Snow White collection, um, specifically inspired by images like this. So those fluffy sleeves. Um, I also found some pictures with more like square necks because I really want to try like a square neck mostly because I got a pattern called the Hello Gorgeous Pattern from Pattern Emporium. I heard about this from Kristen from the Dahlia Society. I'll put a link to her video on it down below. And also, if you're not following her, you really should if you like sewing and creative stuff. She's, um, she's really cute. She's this little Australian lady and uh, she has the most adorable accent and she lives in a beautiful place. She lives kind of like near the bushland of Australia. And so they had like, you know, this beautiful garden and she's just really charming. But she, Pattern Emporium is a Australian company and they have this dress and it comes in like, uh, it's got big puff sleeves, I mean, this shirt, it's got big puff sleeves and it's got um, a bunch of different necklines. So there's a low neck uh, that's round, a high neck that's round, a high square neck and a low square neck. And um, I just thought it'd be really interesting to hack that into a dress that had kind of a 30s look because of the big puffy sleeves. So that is something that I'm kind of planning. Um, and then uh, I also have an oldie but a goodie, the Sinclair Yasmine dress. And those are the lines of that. It has that beautiful um, V in the middle for the waistband. And then the reason I thought about that for this 30s inspired collection is because, where's my Kindle? Um, there is a dress in here that pretty much is that dress with different sleeves. If I can find it. 
I really need to put like bookmarks in here because um, there's a lot of it's it's a pretty long book of catalog stuff. But of course, I was not that organized, so that's not what I did. Um, where is it? I know it's like right around here. Oh my gosh. Okay, actually there's two. All right, look at this. Do you see this one? Let me get closer. So this dress, I mean, look, that looks a lot like the Sinclair Yasmin. Um, it's got the V shape, it's got the, uh, the shoulder gathers, it's got everything. And it just has a different sleeve. So I'm going to hack the Sinclair Yasmin to have that sleeve. And then I've been working on creating a version that has more shoulder gathers, so I'm gonna do that. And then the other idea I had, I guess this has ended up being like a sewing plans video, so that's fun. So then there's, there's this bad boy. Look at that, isn't that beautiful with the twist front? And I just got my little pattern hauling thing, another Sinclair pattern that is the Noyoka. Nyoka? I don't know how to say this. I think it's Nyoka um, pattern. And look, it's got that cross front. So I'm thinking if I could do the A-line dress with the cross front, I could hack myself some late 1930s sleeves onto that bad boy and Bob's your uncle, I have a 1930s dress. So those are kind of some plans I have. Um, I also want to try to make some blouses, either knit them or actually maybe sew a blouse in actual woven fabric, which I never do. Um, so those are ideas. I will definitely, I'm working on the Hello Gorgeous hacked into a dress and I'm probably gonna film that process. So um, I don't know, that probably won't be part of a blog, that'll be a separate video. Um, so look for that, I guess, if you're a sewist and you're interested. But I think I'm gonna leave you guys right there. Um, I need to finish my clue for knitting and start the next one. I wanna to try to film a little bit of working on that blouse turned into a dress. And, uh, and we have a Safeway order coming soon. We ordered some groceries, um, which let me tell you guys, just to rave about it, last night we had the best Instacart experience of our lives. It's the little things. It was a small order, it was from Fred Meyer, but like they did so good. Like we had meat in it and they usually get our meat like first and then like it goes bad. Like not bad, but like it's warmer than I want it when it arrives. Well, no. No, they got the meat last. They found everything, which I know is like not as much about them and it's about store stock, but it was just, it was great. We got everything we ordered and they checked dates on things like bread to make sure it wasn't gonna go to bad like tomorrow. So yeah, Instacart, when it's good, it's, it's the best. <laughs> so that was my wow. So even though I was kind of sick with IBS for a couple of days, I'm feeling a lot better today and I feel like there are good things happening. So um, I will see you guys very soon. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.